Ahoy! One of the things I really enjoyed in New World were the duels right in front of town. This is something I used to do way back in the day in World of Warcraft Vanilla. And of all the things I did in gaming, that's the only thing where I can say I was actually really, really good at it at the time. I'm not as good at it in New World yet, for sure. I definitely need to practice a little bit more than that. Um, but I think I got a pretty, a pretty good impression of... Uh, how the weapons are overall and that's what we're going to talk about today. I want to make a little bit of a tier list discussing the potential of different weapons in duels specifically. In that context, first I want to say tier lists are always opinion based, there will always be differences and I love to hear what you think, what your favorite weapons were, what you thought was really strong in duels if you played some duels and also Ranged weapons are not my priority. I primarily focus on melee weapons. I will talk about the ranged weapons too, but I'm specialized in melee weapons and that's why I can give you more in-depth information compared to the ranged weapons. We're going to look at the, the tier maker tier list here and we're also going to look at uh, newworldfans.com where we have the skill tree overview so I can discuss each skill tree in a little bit more depth. To set a little bit of a baseline, but let's begin with the one that I think uh, most people will agree on. That's the life staff. So B is going to be the middle tier, by the way. That's the middle ground. That's average, uh, slightly above average A. C is slightly lower and S is like top tier. D is, is uh, worst. So life staff is extremely strong, not because of any of this. These things are great. You get some extra protections for certain things. Um, no, that's the wrong skill. There, there's a there's a perk somewhere, somewhere when you get extra protections and, and all that type of stuff. Um, you get a bunch of healing in various ways and that's really what it comes down to. Uh, healing is extremely strong as a mechanic in New World right now because there aren't enough anti-heal mechanics. And therefore you can out-heal a lot of opponents, especially if you have a decent amount of tankiness along with everything else. So it doesn't really matter how much damage the enemy does or how much CC they do when you can just survive through most of it by heal spamming. And the other thing is that healing scales with focus, but you can just put an Ember Gem on your, on your other weapon and still deal very good damage with it as well. So you don't even lose all too much uh, by specking into focus. So overall, I think healing is just extremely potent and there just aren't enough counters. If there were more counters, it would probably be more balanced already. Uh, as it stands, the only thing that can kind of uh, go against it is the hatchet because the hatchet has its own self-heal and uh, an anti-heal mechanic, but that requires a very specific spec just to counter healers only. So I think we'll probably see changes for release and that obviously goes for everything here. This is a beta tier list. A lot of this can change um, and I expect significant changes. But yeah, for, for the heal staff specifically, that's that's where it is right now. Uh, I want to emphasize this again. Like I think this list is just more of a point of where things were uh, during the beta and I think it's an interesting perspective for now. But this is likely not what everything is going to be like at launch and we'll see what changes they do to shift things around. Now, the next weapon is the first melee weapon, and that is the Rapier. I think the Rapier is extremely good. I don't think it's life staff level good, um, but it has quite a few reasons why it's so good. So if we look at the Rapier, um, it's a, uh, well, partial, partially CC, but highly mobility focused weapon. You have Evade, which is essentially an extra dodge uh, on a very short cooldown of six seconds, and that can also amplify your next attack. You get uh, stamina back for more dodges. Um, you can get the, the cooldown reduction somewhere here, right? If you if you use light attacks, you can reduce the cooldown of this ability. So you're just constantly dashing and dodging and weaving around and making it extremely hard to hit you overall. And if the enemy ends up hitting you, you also have Repost. Repost is a counter attack that counters really most attacks in the game. Like this even counters stuns, for example, which really threw me off in one of the duels. Uh, Repost is um, also very buffable through various different effects. The problem with it is that it can be dodged right now. So if the enemy hits you, uh, you trigger Repost very, very quickly. Like you ideally want to use this responsively to an enemy attack because it, it, it's so quick, it's like almost instant, uh, that you can use it very quick instead of just using it preemptively. Uh, but then the enemy can still dodge out of the follow-up stun because it just is like in a straight line in front of you. And if people get really good at that, it might become a bit of a problem. Uh, it doesn't happen all too often from what I've seen so far. I accidentally did it once, for example, to, to an enemy using repost, but uh, quite often they will they will eat the repost, so it depends on the on the player skill. 
And then with flesh, you have an insane amount of extra mobility because it's just an, an extra dash. That is also an extremely wide area, um, meaning it deals damage to enemies very, very easily. It's very hard to avoid. Uh, so yeah, between those three, that's like the tree that I would primarily look towards uh, when it comes to dueling. Flurry, not a dual skill in my opinion. You can follow it up um, after repost, I guess. But with the way that uh, stuns currently work, because I think this applies as a stun, I think you can actually break out after the first flurry hit. I uh, would have to verify that, but generally speaking, that's how most stuns work. And uh, it's just not good to have an attack that has like a long chain and lock yourself in place for a long time if the enemy has any mobility to get away. Uh, Trondo, I haven't really played with too much. I've, I've seen a few people use it. I don't think it's bad. It's just some extra damage. I uh, personally would probably prefer the skills from the Grace Tree. Uh, Flourish and Finish, kind of the same thing. Like, yeah, there's some nice effects, but you'd have to heavily go into this bleeding... Uh, style and and you also only get a uh, a perk at the end that is specifically for flourish and finish whereas most other trees have like an independent perk uh, whereas this tree is just full of, of of things that allow you to dodge better and and return damage better and just yeah dodge and weave so i think this is extremely strong i think it doesn't have all too many counters so far uh, and what makes it especially strong is that uh, the rapier scales with int so it's a perfect weapon for mages as a secondary weapon. So if you're a fire staff user, if you're an ice gauntlet user, this is a fantastic secondary weapon to have uh, because it's something that can very easily punish enemies that get in your melee range. So for example, uh, you fight someone and, and uh, they f try very hard to close the distance to you because uh, you're using ice gauntlet and then they finally close the distance. They're like, okay, I finally got him. Uh, and suddenly you pop the repost on them right as they try to attack you and uh, they're stunned and you can create distance again or you can use your additional dashes to get away if you're out of stamina. Uh, just a lot of things coming together there that I think make this weapon very effective. The only reason why I don't think it's an ST weapon is because for all its flashiness and all its evasions and cancels and all of that, um, it takes a lot of effort to get a high amount of damage out of it. There are many other weapons where getting a high amount of damage out of them is very easy. Uh, with the Rapier, you just need to do very clean, very perfect cancels. Uh, if you mess up a little bit, you lose a lot of DPS or, yeah, you just end up being in a bad spot. And it's a lot more punishing to use than some other melee weapons. And I think that is that is a significant downside. But other than that, I think it's a very strong weapon. What do we do next? I think we get the Fire Staff out of the way. Um, so with the Fire Staff, I would say it's, it's an A-tier weapon. It's uh, not a Life Staff, um, but... If we look at the Fire Staff, it mainly just does damage. What's nice about it is it also has uh, a lot of crit effects, like uh, on either side, really, I think. For example, here you got a 15% crit chance, and, uh, well, I'd have to find them, but there, I think there's some more crit effects. Uh, a lot of burn effects that linger on the enemy, like this one, for example. Uh, those go together very nicely. Uh, you have... A little bit of CC here and there, I think, if you if you spec into certain uh, skills. Um, trying to remember, I thought there was one or so that had like a knockback or a slow. Uh, but primarily you're just looking at damage. Um, you also have a burnout dash, which is, I think is nice for some extra mobility. Again, on top of all the other dodges that you can use, especially if you're a light roll user, you, you still have the burnout after that to dash even more, which I think is, is fantastic. Um, and yeah, it, it just does a lot of damage. You can zone pretty nicely because there's certain uh, area effects and all that. Um, I don't really know what the primarily spec abilities are. I think I've seen Incinerate. I think I've seen a lot of Burnout. Um, Pillar of Fire, I think not so much. Meteor not so much. I think Fireball also gets specced a fair bit um, because of the the burning field afterwards. So yeah, I've seen a little bit of, of uh, fluctuation there, I think, in the builds. But again, I didn't look all too deeply into them. I just know that overall it can zone very nicely, it does a lot of damage from the distance and uh, again you can just switch over to rapier if the enemy gets close. And also what I think is very important, the projectiles seem to be a bit more forgiving than say for example the bow or the musket because those are relatively unforgiving, uh, either the projectile or the hit scan, whereas uh, the, the fireballs seem to have a little bit more of an impact field so to speak 
so you will win a lot of ranged skirmishes where it maybe doesn't necessarily seem like you would based on damage numbers alone. Uh, and I think especially in duel where everyone is constantly dodging, um, that can be very helpful. And not just dodging, also weaving around and stuff, because you can do pretty decent jukes if you're just focusing on one target. Next, let's go for the spear. Now, the spear is technically insane. Technically, it's a big one here, though. Uh, if we look at the spear, it has a great variety of tools um, for, for PvP. You have the javelin spear that's a stagger, um, and then you can turn that into a knockdown. You have the sweep that uh, knocks enemies down as well, and um, then you can do a follow-up uh, skill here, coup de grace. Um, you also have the vault kick, which is another stun. And I think those are the three skills you're primarily looking for for PvP. This is so uh, you can close the distance, you knock them down, you can use this, uh, or ranged poke, whichever you prefer, depending on the enemy. Uh, this is your, you know, they get close and you just hit them with it. And uh, this is the third one you're going to use every time because of this. Uh, continuous motion reduces your other spear cooldowns by 30% upon su successful hits. So you always want to keep this for last uh, when you can. Whereas the others are just like damage. Like this skewer is too slow. The animation is too slow. The leap's too short. Uh, it's just an extra hit, basically, in my opinion. So I, I don't think it's worth it for PvP specifically. Uh, perforate, again, I don't think abilities that root you in place for multiple hits are that great. It works a little bit better for the spear because you have uh, various knockdowns that you can make use of. So it can be okay, but... Again, often those attacks can still be avoided or, or people see you use it and then dodge out of it and then, wow, you just used your, your cooldown for uh, <laughs> for nothing, basically. Oh, not nothing, but uh, for very little damage. Uh, and I, Cyclone, I haven't really used it enough to say that, uh, that it, I find it particularly good or bad. It has a knockback, which is interesting. Um, most melee weapons don't necessarily want a knockback. With the spear, it's a little bit different uh, because you have a little bit more range. But probably not my preferred choice either, most of the time. I, so far, I would say Javelin Sweep, uh, Vault Kick. Now, the problem with the Spear's attacks, uh, this is especially true for, for Javelin and Vault Kick, as well as basic attacks, not so much for Sweep, because Sweep has like a sweeping motion, is I think the weapon, or I'm very certain the weapon has a different hitbox, or at least definitely has a different swing animation from other weapons. So other weapons will swing like this, right? They will swing slashing motion-wise and, and cover a fair bit of ground that way, whereas the uh, the spear just, just pokes you. It just has a forward stabbing motion. And the forward stabbing motion uh, covers less ground left and right. And that is a very big problem in duel if you're playing against an experienced player who uses... Uh, their mobility to juke attacks, not just dodges, but also just sidestepping, because you will often end up stuck in the in the post-attack animation uh, when a hit didn't connect, and, and they can punish you. Because uh, again, the, the the less wide the sweep it is, the, the easier it is to juke to the side. And in very close combat, that's what you do: you juke to the side, you step a little bit to the side, uh, and attack the enemy again. And if they try to hit you again, you step the other direction. And with certain weapons, that's just not a problem because their, their sweeps are so wide, they cover like almost 180 in front of you. The spear doesn't do that. As long as you can keep an enemy locked down in your combo, you can do a very high amount of damage between these uh, abilities. Um, but if they get out of the lockdown briefly, then they can punish you very hard. And uh, you don't really have a response mechanic at that point because, yeah, just forward mashing just doesn't work for this weapon, whereas for others it works very well. Uh, it's kind of a similar issue to the uh, to the rapier, but I think it's more severe because the, the rapier still covers a lot more ground to the sides, I think, and the abilities uh, allow you to m be more agile yourself as well during this. Whereas, like for example, the vault kick is especially uh, problematic with that. It's just straight forward, and it doesn't seem to have very much direction control once it's used. So, yeah. You really have to land your stuff very effectively and you have to land those basics and it's a lot harder than with other abilities. So if this, like, if you're really, really good with this weapon, I think this weapon could be extremely strong or maybe even at the top of A tier. But that is too situational. Like, You have to be so insanely better than with any other weapon that I can't justify uh, putting it higher than this, even though I think it is in itself a very potent weapon. And now uh, 
we'll do the hammer. Ah, the hammer. The hammer is is technically a beautiful item. It's, it's a beautiful weapon. I love it so much, but the hammer has a big problem. Um, so I'm putting the hammer in C. I don't think it's D tier, but I don't think it can keep up with the above weapons. And that is for one reason. The basic attacks on the hammer, different from the spear, are fine. But the abilities are a big problem. Because you have a lot of abilities with very, very long wind up. And what that means, it's, it's super easy to avoid them. A lot of abilities, like Shockwave, not so much because it has extended radius, but a lot of abilities uh, you can just walk out of, basically, before they happen. And otherwise, you can just juke back. And the same is true for the attacks. Even the light attack is relatively slow. So, yeah, that's one problem. And then there's another big problem. So, this ability here, uh, Wrecking Ball, is technically one of the best uh, PvP abilities, in my opinion, because it's quick. It is is the type of attack that you would need in PvP. This is actually one uh, that you can easily confirm on the enemy. The problem is that the flatten mechanic is currently bugged, or at least not working properly with the hammer. So flatten mechanic, what it does is it, it, it basically like slams the enemy to the ground, puts them on the floor. What you would want to do is follow that up with a heavy attack, for example. What you can't do is follow it up with a heavy attack, because when the enemy is flattened, most of the hammer attacks will actually not connect. This is extremely frustrating and this only happens in PvP, it's not an issue in PvE at all, it works perfectly there. Uh, and that means that this ability is basically useless, even though it would otherwise be one of the best PvP abilities. It's just way too much risk to uh, try and use it uh, when it doesn't work properly. And then you have the Shockwave, which uh, is like the big uh, PvP ability in, in big large-scale fights. Uh, that's still good, but also very telegraphed, you can very easily dodge out of it. And, well, after that you can, for example, you can level clear out, but it's uh, it's a knockback. Do you really want to have a knockback with a hammer? I don't think so, because different from other melee weapons, the hammer really doesn't have any gap clauses. So if you knock an enemy back from you, they will say, thank you, let me walk away and deal damage to you from the distance. Um, Path of Destiny could be argued to be, like, one of the better options here, because it's... Uh, while telegraphed, it has like this this effect that travels quite a fair bit of distance, so you can hit range users with this. Yeah, and it's relatively slow, but it, it, it kind of works, and then if you get Aftershock, um, every crowd control you use would slow enemies by 20% for 4 seconds, so that would work if you put uh, seismic waves on this, which staggers enemies in its path, so they get slowed by, by the path of destiny. But that requires you to level like fully into crowd crusher already in the first place. Yeah. Uh, kind of awkward. Justice for all. Again, I don't like last three perks that are for one specific ability only, but uh, that gives it a secondary uh, attack. Um, some people have said to me that they think this is something you can use, like the, the Justice for all combo. But again, relatively telegraphed, uh, armor breaker. Yeah, it's a little bit of damage, but it's it's all the slow hammer attacks, right? And then, you, okay, you get one quick attack, in, but then what? Uh, what if the enemy walks away? What if the enemy jukes your, your one combo? Um, I don't think I don't think there's uh, there's much room to play for with the hammer at the moment. And I think what the hammer needs is uh, more consistency and how the, the the damage is applied from wrecking ball, especially, and maybe some slightly faster abilities or slightly faster attacks or something, just a little bit that's less telegraphed, or something that provides a little bit more mobility so that the hammer has has some way of closing distance as well uh, when it comes to it. Again, you can kind of work around that, but it's it's. It's a huge crutch compared to what other uh, weapon trees have. I think the hammer is a fantastic uh, weapon in PvP and highly underrated in PvP on, on like a large scale. I don't see it nearly enough still, but uh, for duel specifically, I think it's just too sluggish. Uh, doesn't really bring the potential that it could otherwise. And we're talking about heavy, big weapons. We can also talk about the Great X. Now I'm going to put this up uh, here. I know this is going to be controversial. I think there are people, or a lot of people right now, that are like, either say, okay, Great X is just super broken, S tier, nothing comes close. Um, to that I say, I will not factor in the glitches that you can use. Like, if, if you're doing like the double hit mechanic, for example, that's a glitch, that doesn't, that's not how I would rate a weapon. 
Also, the double hit is actually uh, pretty ineffective in duels most of the time, in my opinion, because it's just super easy to avoid because it's so telegraphed as well. Like, you see him charging up, what do you do? You do a dash or you do something else to get you out of there. You just hold your mobility until then. Fine. Not a problem. But I also think that some people are really undervaluing it, saying, oh, it's just a noob stumper. It's, just, uh, it's actually like you can avoid all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. So there are a few things that you need to do with a great X to make it a great uh, dual weapon. But you can. So, if we look at the Great X skill tree, um, the two bread and butter skills that everyone uses for duel are charge, and you have to have unpredictable strike, in my opinion. Because charge is just a forward charge that swings up, um, and the problem is it swings up. And what I t tell you before when we're talking about the, the spear, you want your attacks to go like this, not up. And what you do is you get unpredictable strike, and then you can cancel the charge, and then it goes sideways. <laughs> then it's a side sweep, which has a far further width. And I didn't have that for most of my time uh, dueling. And I, it really frustrated me like how often you can end up missing the charge or just ending up in the wrong place after the charge. Get unpredictable strike, no longer a problem. You're going to put the pain on them, and you, you can even use this as an attack cancel in your normal chain if you really feel like you're not going to use your charge for anything else. Like, it's insane. Uh, you need this. For dual, you need this. This is your best gap closer. There's no reason not to get it. Second ability, Reap. Also, 99% of all players will probably get Reap for, for dual specifically. Reap pulls in an enemy and deals extra damage. And you can increase the Reap range uh, to 8 meters, which seems to cover most dodges. You can't use this during a dodge when they're in their immunity frame, but if you use it right after they dodge and they don't have a second dodge, then you can pull them back in. Uh, additionally, you get a little bit of a heal, and this one I think is also pretty nice, fail attraction. This can be avoided because it's it's a follow-up attack, right? Um, so it's not necessarily guaranteed damage in any situation, but overall uh, I think this is a, a nice bonus to have because it's a pretty quick spin attack afterwards. Uh, you also get Bloodlust uh, allowing you to walk faster towards enemies. I think there were some glitches with it in Duel, like I couldn't tell sometimes, it just didn't seem to turn on, uh, but it'll probably get fixed. Uh, and anyways, uh, so having that extra movement speed and extra damage when you run towards an enemy, obviously huge in Duel. So those are the two skills. And then the discussion why some people think that it's not that good in Duel is Gravity Well. And I agree. I agree that Gravity Well is not that good in Duel. Because uh, it puts out this vortex that pulls people in and at the end it deals damage. Um, and uh, yeah, you can you can get some other perks that don't really benefit uh, all too much. But um, it's kind of awkward to get out of it depending on what abilities you have. Like certain dashes or like most dash abilities allow you to get out of it. But uh, you, you're kind of stuck in there like depending on how much you use beforehand. But the, the other thing is that the gravity well is also very slow, it's very telegraphed, you can kind of avoid it or at least get to the edge of it early and then maybe walk out. Um, I don't think it's a great dual skill. You can use it. I used it most of the time because I needed my, my spec to not just be focused on dual, but it's, it's not the best. But <laughs> there are other options and I think that's what, what, what some people are forgetting. Execute. Execute is slow. Execute does an insane amount of damage, like, you know, 200% to 300% depending on the enemy's health. Um, you can get grit during it, and you can also get uh, a crit chance if the enemy is below 30% health. Uh, so, yeah, you can finish up a deal really quick with this if the enemy is low. Problem with Execute is it's hard to apply because most of the time the enemy will see the attack coming and will try to avoid it somehow. Now, what can you do? You can drain their stamina first. You can force out their other abilities, you can force out their mobility, and uh, you can follow up with the execute then. It's it's not something that you need to spam. It's something you want to use when the opportunity is there. Um, so for example, you can you can do a reap um, and then follow, like chase them down with basics and they're probably going to try and use their dodges and that's where you get them to zero stam. And that's the point where you're like, okay, now we can try and execute. If you don't land and you just try again, <laughs> it'll come up eventually. But that, there are options to still apply and execute. And that is not even the only option, right? That's that's one way to go out if you want to go like super high damage. But the other way is going into the Mauler tree. And uh, I haven't tried this, but looking into these stats, and, and I, I have like recordings of the ability and everything, uh, Maelstrom is actually a fantastic option as well. It's a fast spinning attack that deals 110% weapon damage, pulls enemies closer to you, and you can increase the pull range by 50%. It's not going to be a second reap, but it's going to be quicker than a reap, and it means that if the enemy gets away after a reap, you can again pull them in. 
And uh, you can also absorb projectiles, meaning you can use this to counter um, ranged as well if you want. I probably won't use that. Uh, but you can get an additional spin attack um, here as well, 110% weapon damage. And you can get gravity along with that, meaning your um, pulls cause enemies to be held still 30% longer, which would apply to both Maelstrom as well as Reap. So you can just have a, a skill tree that is all about not letting the enemy get away. You charge them, you, you get the unpredictable strike on them, they try to get away, you keep hitting them, and eventually you just land the reap on them, uh, or the maelstrom, and then the other one, and they just keep getting CC'd, keep getting, kept getting like, lock in the gravity, um, and so much they can do, and then you, you pull, they put the heavy pull on there, maybe you can use some heavy attacks in between as well, because now, you know, you can put the, the gravity effect on them, and then you use the heavy attacks to pull them again, um, <laughs> which then should apply the gravity effect again, I don't know if it has a cool on at some point. Uh, you can still get the uh, enduring strikes, so you get your your grits uh, while using heavy attacks, and and you can put all that you know in a max out skill tree. This requires it to be level sixty. I think that's why people don't really have that perception uh, so far to to really level into this and level into this. But once you get there, I I think that's a that's a very potent dual build, and I think that is most certainly an argument for this being a very uh, strong weapon for dual as well, as, along with the fact that it's it's very easy to hit the attacks, like they're almost magnetic, like the, the, the opposite of the spear. Uh, the Whirlwind, um, I don't know, I haven't really used it much, I, I think it's not really worth it because it's just... It's just you spinning around basically, uh, it, you can increase your movement speed by 50% and at that point it might be worth it as well. Uh, it could, you know, it could be beneficial, potentially. Um, can't say, haven't really tried enough, but again, I think there are enough other options that are not gravity well in these trees uh, that could technically be used for duels uh, to make the Great Axe a great axe. And since we're on the topic of great weapons, let's get the Ice Gauntlet out of the way. Ice Gauntlet is one that I haven't used, but I've played against a lot. Um, what I mainly see is people going into the Builder Tree, I think. Ice Pylon, I saw a decent amount, it's just, you know, nice extra damage, but not everyone had it. Uh, I think Ice Shower was used a lot. Uh, people say, some people say that Ice Shower is not really that good because it's too obvious, it's too slow. Um, but first of all, the, the radius on Ice Shower seems to be a little off, like it seems to be a little bit wider than the visuals indicate. Makes it stronger, of course. And also, you can just stay close to your Ice Shower. You can just, you know, kite the enemy around the Ice Shower and basically force them into the Ice Shower if you if they want to fight you and when you do that like you're gonna get the effects you're gonna get the all the, the bonus perks um, that you can apply through and everything so reducing the defense and all that stuff and yeah i i think uh, i think Aisha was great i think entombed is absolutely fantastic i think that's an amazing ability uh, deals a little bit of damage as well but uh, allows you to just get well completely damage immune at whatever moment you you feel like uh, doing that and, uh, well, I, I think it's it's very strong because you can get your mana back and everything as well. So using this in the right moment can avoid a lot of pain. Um, on this side, I think we're more looking towards the PvE stuff. Uh, I think Wind Chill, some people have used in PvP because there's like a pushback. Um, but it's not the stuff I primarily saw over here. Again, not too familiar with the with the eye skills uh, overall to, to tell you in detail uh, how effective they can be or cannot be. And I think like I think it's some some uh, people run wind chill, ice shower, entombed or something like that, um, or or sometimes ice pollen. Uh, what I can say for sure is that the ice tree overall has a lot of zoning. It has a, a decent amount of um, mobility as well. I think, uh, or like anti mobility, <laughs> slowing enemies rather and yeah here it increased uh, speed in a frosted area. So there's there's like a little bit of of getting quicker yourself as well and you can you can just kite forever like you can kite better than anyone else and it's it's really what makes this weapon because it's it's the same scenario as the fire staff uh and, and the rapier but basically on steroids you're just gonna slow them forever you're gonna kite them forever and uh if they get close you can punish them really hard and then you you just start freezing them again freezing them again or, or you go into your little ice block for a little bit and think about what you've done uh, and you deal pretty high amounts of damage still. So I think Ice Gauntlet is, is definitely up here, and there aren't really uh, many things that significantly counter it. 
Uh, now, now it's gonna get interesting. Okay. Um, sword and shield. Sword and shield. I'm gonna make uh, a little bit of a bold one here. I think sword and shield is slightly better, slightly better than the hammer. Not maybe not even by a full tier, but uh, it's somewhere. Nah, uh, maybe, yeah, somewhere somewhere between here. I, I can't really decide. Let me put it here for now, and I'll think about it at the end if I want to leave it like that. So, sword and shield, not designed for PvP for sure. Uh, ironically, <laughs> has some okay PvP perks. The big problem with the sword and uh, shield tree is that it doesn't really have sufficient mobility. You have a little bit of a leap here, pretty tiny. You have a super short dash here. That's just that's just really bad. <laughs> Um, this this dash is not terrible in PVE, but also not great. Uh, and it's it's just really bad in PVP because it's it has this wind up before and where we go backwards before you charge forward, meaning the enemy sees you charging that and they can just walk away. Like they don't even need to dash; they can just walk away, and there's a good chance they won't get hit by it. Um, yeah, this, this is the awkward one. It has a knock back as well, which means it pushes enemies back from you, which again doesn't make too much sense for a melee weapon that doesn't have much mobility. Um, the big one really is shield bash because it's 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 a stun. It's a very good stun, and uh, yeah, you can increase the duration by one second here as well, which sets up for a lot of other things. So think back, for example, to the great axe execute. You can you can stun someone and switch to axe and tonk them. Um, you have the the reverse stab, which is pretty neat because it can reduce your other cooldowns by twenty five percent, and you also have the define stance, which it reduces the base damage from attackers, which also is pretty strong. It's a bit annoying because you have to like do this animation first before it gets activated. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's overall pretty good. You can have additional damage reduction here by 20% as well, uh, and you can get some health back as well. So really the stance is about surviving. Uh, <laughs> some really annoying players paired this with a life staff and it's just, it's just frustrating because you just don't die. You can just put down the heals and because like every other weapon loses its effects when you swap stances, but the heals do not. So you just put down the heal on the ground and then you go into this stance and then you just, just wait for the enemy to slowly die while you're not taking damage at all. Um, what I also think is great about this is you can block uh, enemy projectiles. So you don't need to dodge that much. You can just put your block up for certain things. Um, I mean, technically you can go Whirling Blade as well, but that's more of an AOE clearing thing, by the way. Uh, and there, there are quite a few perks that just, you know, allow you to uh, use things a little bit more effectively. But you have to find the right mix of, uh, of stats here because some are very PvE focused. Like, look for example at this one, like one with a shield. When you block uh, with a shield, all shield scales will charge by 1%. Not exactly very beneficial in PvP. Like if you get attacked by five mobs in PvE, it's huge, but in PvP... Yeah, okay, great. Or here, um, threat generation is, is not really relevant, even though 100% more damage obviously is, so uh, makes it 150% damage. So there, there are some perks where you're like, uh, is this good for me here? Or is this something for PvE? And uh, the problem is obviously that if you have a short sword and shield spec, then you're likely using it primarily for PvE. So if you go into PvP, into duels with that spec, it might not be ideal, it might not be optimized. Uh, that said, I think uh, still... There are some really cool perks here, and especially like the reverse step, cooldown reset can be really nice if you can apply it to an enemy. Uh, and the the potential to just sit in the stance and wait out your cooldown in your other stance and then go in with the shield bash and followed up with a strong ability in the other stance, I think can be very strong. Um, it also works pretty decently into like uh, those high mobility things like rapier, I think, because you just, you just block a lot of that stuff and you just uh, watch them do that little dance and go through through all the motions and you're standing there like, yep, yeah, uh, I just blocked most of that and, and now it's my turn to punch you in the face with a shield and deal a little bit of damage to you and then we'll do that again, okay? And then you watch them dance for 20 seconds again and then you do it all over. So, yeah, I think it has its uses. It's very niche. It's, it's relatively hard to use as well, use it effectively because, again, especially closing the distance is a problem. But it, it can be nice. Maybe maybe I'll put it in B. Maybe I'll put it in B. I'll, I'll be honest. I think you can actually get more out of it than out of the hammer in in most situations, just because the attacks are quicker and stuff as well, and it has that good 
reliable CC, which is, is very like hard to avoid if you're close to the enemy. So yeah, it, again, pretty close between those two though. Um, and we have the hatchet. Hatchet, I think is uh, right here. Same discussion as the Great Axe. Some people think it's completely OP, completely broken. Uh, some people think it's a noob stomper and uh, beyond that level, no one should use it because it's super easy to fight against, blah, blah, blah. Same story. So why do I think the hatchet is overall pretty good for the world? The first big thing that everyone will mention is Berserk. Berserk is great because you do uh, more damage. Uh, Berserk is also great because at which point, at some point, you get uh, you're uninterruptible and you cannot be staggered. So you can just <laughs> mow enemies down. Um, Berserk is also great because you're getting uh, extra movement speed. And those are the things that people look at a lot. And then the one thing that everyone looks at is re refreshing Berserk, Berserk and Refresh. Uh, while Berserk is active, gain a portion of your health back every five seconds. And uh, the amount of health I've gained increases by the time, like depending on how long Berserk is active. And this scales with your health. So the more health you have, uh, the more this heals. And, and then there's also Berserking Purge, which actually removes all crowd control from you if you use it effectively. Sometimes hard to do because sometimes you just want to use Berserk earlier, especially if you have a high con build, uh, because you want to get the defensive effect, you want to get the extra survivability effect, um, and the extra survivability requires you to be at full health, so the initial health hit uh, is reduced, and for that you need to use it relatively early. The overall point for me is like people say, yeah, you can just wait out Berserk. And that's true. But Berserk is not exactly on a long cooldown with 15 seconds. And you can just keep healing. Like what I saw a lot or what I was, was ranged enemies just trying to kite me and throw their stuff at me. And what I would do is I go Berserk and then gradually run at them and juke their attacks. And obviously they can create distance for a pretty long time. But it also doesn't matter if they do damage to me, because all of the damage is out healed as long as you have a constitution build. If this gets changed to like flat healing, this would be a, a very different story, and I, I imagine that might happen. Um, but as long as it's like it is right now, it doesn't really matter if if you can like not fight the person berserking for the duration of the berserk, because they'll just use that time to heal then. They don't really have to care. Um, the only mistake they can make is swap out of Berserk and, and lose the heal. Uh, additionally, Defy Death, meaning you have uh, immortality for 3 seconds at 0 HP, is also huge. Uh, because many duels just end up being close and, and you just have Defy Death and you just have 3 seconds to just mow down on the enemy when they think they got you. Uh, <laughs> just pretty strong. <laughs> uh, the other skills are where it gets like more interesting. So obviously most people are just running the full Berserk's tree because that's where, where all the PvE clear is and everything. Uh, Feral Rush is a forward leap. It's not the fastest leap, it's not the best leap, but it's an okay leap, I would say. And uh, it lands two hits afterwards. The nice thing about it is Crippling Strikes. If Feral Rush hits a target in the back, it causes a root immobilizing the target for two seconds. Problem is... Experienced players will try and position themselves in a way where they don't get hit in the back. Um, they will try and keep their the, the eyes on you. As long as they do that, not all too much you can get out of Feral Rush. If you ever catch an enemy off guard with it though, or, though, or if they're like going sideways to you and you catch them with this somehow, it's brutal. Because that allows you to follow up with Raging Torrent. And Raging Torrent is a problematic skill for for duel for sure because it's like like uh, many of the spear skill or like like the spear skill and the rapier skill that just uh have multiple hits after each other and you can just walk out most of the time that's the case for raging torrent as well uh, but if the enemy is rooted by crippling strike it guarantees a free raging torrent and this is four fast attacks dealing 90 percent weapon damage each and if you fully uh, level it then uh, you also get movement speed afterwards and you get an additional light attack at the end dealing 120% weapon damage and this one lunges forward as well a little bit so it, it can follow up even if the enemy is already starting to move away. So this is great if you get this combo going with crippling strikes. If not, not so much. Um, and that's like where you have to make the decision. Like, Do you want to really go super ham on the enemy melee? And do they fight you? Will they fight you? In that case, Raging Torrent is great. If not, you want to look at this tree. 
uh, this tree for PvP is great. The problem is that it's uh, usually not as effective for PvE, so you have to have a dual specific spec. Rending throw, like the problem with all of these generally is that they're very slow. Um, that is uh, something that is true for, for, yeah, for rending throw, it's true for social distancing, and it's true for uh, infected throw as well, I think. They, they, the projectile speed is relatively slow, it's relatively uh, telegraphed. Um, I think the quickest one is actually aim throw, which is a right click throw. Problem with that one, I love it, and I love to use it, especially in PvE. Uh, but problem with that one for dual is you can't block if you use this. You can swap your weapon and block with the other one, but uh, not always ideal. So, trade-offs. I used it a little bit, it, it worked sometimes, but you really have to rely on your dodge and uh, the throws consume stamina as well. But these uh, ability projectiles uh, don't really run into that issue, and especially infected throw is an interesting one, because this is like the only effective tool at the moment uh, with healing reduction. 30% healing reduction um, for 8 seconds if you level this, uh, if the enemy is below 30% health, uh, otherwise uh, it's 5 seconds. And it also has an AoE effect around it. I think this is something you should definitely level for duels because the throw itself is relatively easy to avoid. Um, that, that lasts for 3 seconds, it lingers for 3 seconds. If you have that, again, something you probably only want to reach around level 60, then, uh, then dual can become a different story. If you have uh, Berserk, Feral Rush, and then uh, as a third one you get Infected Throw, then you may actually be able to deal with healers because you have your own self-heal and you have the anti-heal. Uh, and you can put that on the, on like you can put the cloud on the area they're healing in. So there's some potential there, but it's still relatively uh, big asterisk, like relatively limited in that regard. Uh, social distancing can also be used because it's a slowing ability. Uh, I don't like the way it animates at all. It's, it's not a good like cancel or anything in my opinion. Um, but yeah, you know, slowing the enemy down and, and getting sped up yourself uh, is pretty nice and you can increase the slow here as well. So it's an option to look into, it's an option to consider. Um, wouldn't be my first choice, I would say. Um, because I, I just think Infected Throw is so strong in, in scenarios where you can utilize it. And then Rending Throw, uh, not really my thing, it's just not really, like, not really the perks uh that that i think i would necessarily want even though the ability cooldown reaction down here uh is nice like if you have an if, like you throw it on a target with an active debuff um which you have to apply first but if you if you get a debuff on the target like could also be with another weapon then you can use that to reduce your berserk cooldown so we can berserk even more often and get even more heals so there's some room uh to 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 utilize these as well um and some some extra dodging potential in this tree uh so also somewhat useful, again, I think it's primarily raging toward you looking to switch out because these are like your mobility tools. Uh, and other than that, the hatchet revolves around is, its basic attacks. It just has a lot of perks for like basic attacks and everything surrounding it um, that make it so that aggressively attacking the enemy and weaving and dodges is relatively rewarding uh, with the hatchet and it, it's relatively easy to confirm. It's similar to the Great Axe where uh, weapon attacks just stick to the enemy very well compared to other weapons. Not as good as the Great Axe which has a wider radius but overall uh, you can sometimes like snap around to an enemy that like just dashed through you basically which most other weapons don't do, this, do to the same extent. So I think that makes the hatchet very potent. I think um, it just there are ways to counter it but it just, just still has so much potential uh, being utilized effectively even while being countered that I think it's an, an, an A tier weapon uh, like right in the middle here. And and that brings me to the two that I uh, like have a bit of a hard time judging. So the bow I really can't say much about. Um, the musket I can say a little bit more. So the bow tree technically has a lot of um, mobility skills like a lot of things that revolve around dodging, uh, getting extra mobility after a dodge, you're getting a haste. Um, that type of stuff, uh, certain effects that are applied longer. Um, the problem really is mostly, for example, in, in, in this one, in, in the knee shot, which is just a really weak perk. 10% slow for two seconds if you do a leg shot specifically. Um, or a headshot specifically, you wouldn't want to rely on that in duel, in my opinion, because enemies just move too much. Uh, and the skills. Like, for example, evade shot, You'd think this is a very quick 
uh, attack cancel into a, a backwards shot, but it's not the case. It's a relatively slow mobility skill uh, compared to some others. Uh, Rain of Arrows requires you to use some awkward target at first to drop them down. Uh, really horrible in large scale PvP, but also in, in, in small scale PvP. It just doesn't feel good, in my opinion. Poison Shot, I think, is one of the better ones. Um, Poison Shot actually does a relatively quick shot. And um, you get some extra damage here. And, and this one especially is important. I don't know why there's no line between them. But uh, if you directly hit a target with Poison Shot, it deals 200% more damage. So that's big damage. I think that is a perk that is really nice. But that's almost it. Like uh, I think Penetrating Shot is great as well. It's an attack cancel too. You can fire a normal shot right into Penetrating Shot. Um, and uh, get some extra damage there as well. Um, but that's about it. Splinter shot, maybe I'm just too stupid to use it properly, but like maybe you need to use it like a hands shot or something. Maybe it's some secret method to use it effectively, but I could not get it like land on target with multiple uh, arrows effectively most of the time. I don't know what's up with that. Um, and rapid shot uh, locks you in place and then fires three projectiles, but the third one is from a slightly different angle than the other two, uh, which is extremely ineffective in PvP, in my opinion, because you also have to account for the enemy movement, so you need a ton of muscle memory to make this work, and you're still locked in place, and then you only get certain benefits if you uh, hit all three shots, or specifically the third shot, and that's not even a great benefit overall. So, yeah, like, poison shot, penetrating shot, I think, are the, the skills to go for, and then maybe evade shot. Um... And then just, you know, weave around all the mobility effects here and, and you, you get something out of it. Um, so you can kind of deal a decent amount of damage from distance and, and keep some space between you and the enemy. Um, the problem that I see with, with the bow is just that it's extremely hard to hit compared to like Fire Staff or Ice Gun, in my opinion. It doesn't have the same amount of setup and... Uh, yeah, I, I didn't see it being very effective so far. I know if you're really good at it, uh, you can make it work, but I, I didn't really see much of that compared to other things. And then last but not least, let's talk about the musket. Musket, in my opinion, a C tier weapon. It's not complete trash, but it has the same issue basically as the hammer, but the other way around. Uh, the shots are hit scan, and the reload time after the shots is forever. Hit scan meaning you shoot and uh, there's no projectile, but it, it lands right on the target. So if you hit the target in the moment you shoot, that works. Uh, problems I ran into with that, movement in New World is pretty fast. You have to be really, really good at shooters to make the musket work effectively. Like if you if you have previous experience in, in uh, first person shooters, a lot of it, then you might like the musket. But if you aren't exactly a pro at like quick scoping, you probably won't like it for duels, at least. Um, the the I think the rifle or the musket relies a lot on being far away from the enemy. Doesn't really happen in duels, and it relies on the enemy not necessarily knowing that you're there yet, and then you you know do, do a lot of extra range damage, and that's just not the case because they know that you're there because they're looking at you and they want to kill you. <laughs> um, so you have some perks here that just don't feel good, like the. This, this weapon uh, ability here, the power shot, is nice because it does extra damage, but you need to overload your weapon first, which takes up a normal reload animation. You can do this instead of the normal reload animation, so you shoot a shot and then you like do this power shot effect and it'll load the bullet immediately, but still, it's still the reload animation. Same with uh, Powder Burn, even though I think Powder Burn is a little bit better um, because you deal more damage once the target is on fire and you can, in like increase, uh, extend the burn duration to 13 seconds here. So that's pretty nice if you do a headshot. But again, you have to be super, super, super good at aiming and you have these long reload times to factor in. Then you could take the uh, reload times out of the equation and use shooter stance, um, which allows you to uh, shoot a lot faster because the reload time is reduced by 75%. Uh, normal weapon damage though. Problem is shooter stance leaves you sitting on the ground and if the enemy gets close, there's not much you can do unless you cancel the shooter scans. And you can increase the number of shots to five, but the only way I could see you using this is really just, you know, either the enemy is locked down by something else already, or you do it at the start of the duel, drop right on the ground and, and just shoot all five shots and then hope that it's enough damage. In the trapper tree, we have some technically pretty cool skills. You have the trap that you can throw on the ground. 
problem is the enemy can just walk around and it also takes quite a while to even be thrown on the ground it's i think it's kind of be meant uh, it's, it's kind of meant to be used in pve more um you have stopping power which is again same overloading thing which is nice because it's like a stagger and a knockback but uh, you have to overload the weapon first to get the effect yada 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 um and then you have the sticky bomb which is actually technically decent because you can like throw it at the enemy and stick to them and it does a lot of weapon damage afterwards um the interesting thing if you watched my video yesterday you may have seen this the interesting thing is that the radius is three meters but three meters seems to be very big in this game you can be pretty far away from the sticky bomb and still get hit by it so the best call is probably to just uh if you, if you don't hit the enemy directly because again throwing animation is very annoying and very slow and the effect is very slow there you can just throw it on the ground uh, in front of you and hope that the enemy has to get close to you to fight uh, otherwise you could keep shooting them from a distance uh, works if they have like two melee weapons for example uh, but yeah um not not perfect um it's nice if you can if you can get this applied to their slot as well but it's all very very situational um in terms of effects and then one really nice effect is here hustle again that if you uh, dodge you get haste i don't know why it says zero percent i'm not sure how much it actually was but it's a pretty decent haste increase here as well so you can still get a lot of like juking potential uh, you can reload while dodging but this has a six second cooldown which is really really long um and if you had a lot hit of sh hit, hit a lot of shots then i think you can get decent potential out of out of the trapper tree uh maybe combined with like powder burn uh or or you can go stopping power i suppose um but it just it just feels too hard to use too slow to use uh, compared to what what other weapons can do um and how much more effective they are like i'm kind of torn between the musket and the bow but like really any of the weapons above here i, I would want to have above the musket it's not d tier it's not trash but it's it, li like the hammer it is just too slow in what it does and uh, too telegraphed in what it does and, and too many things that are just too easy to avoid by just walking around them and that's the list uh, that was quite long <laughs> that was a lot longer than i expected this to be um yeah this is the the current state of the items for duel in my opinion again this is subjective um let me know what you think let me know what weapons you liked uh, what, what you've been specking into what you've been playing if you play duels uh and with that uh thank you for watching if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing maybe clicking the bell so you get notified of future videos as well i do a lot more new world content i have a, a lot more in-depth breakdowns on everything coming so yeah if you want to see that please stick around and uh, I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.